As part of the World Series of Bowling, it's Cheetah Championship time, featuring B.J. Moore in the hunt for his first title. Mike Wolfe wants to get back in the winner's circle. Darren Tang, who just joined the tour in July, bowling for a championship. And Anthony Simonson, one of the best players in the world, and he's only 19 years old. We got a packed house here in Reno. We're ready to start the PBA World Series of Bowling. And welcome inside the National Bowling Stadium in downtown Reno for the PBA Cheetah Championship presented by PBA Bowling Challenge Mobile Game. Great bowling fans in for an exciting and potentially high-scoring pattern here as we show you a unique format. Four bowlers at once, Randy Peterson. How do you think this is going to shake out? Who has an advantage here? It's going to be real fast. I think the advantage goes to Anthony Simonson. He's going to be playing farther right and using urethane. He's Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont. The third member of our team is standing by with Anthony Simonson. That's Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Dave. So, Anthony, at just 19 years old, you find yourself in contention for Player of the Year and making another show. So, it's been a pretty great year for you so far. What do you attribute that to? Uh, you know, I've just been getting out here, getting experience over the last couple of years. Uh, it's starting to pay off, getting a little more practice on the lanes. Uh, and, you know, things are starting to come together and realize. Well, good luck to you today. You. Guys, back to you in the booth. Yeah, that might be the understatement of the year right there, Randy. Tell us a little bit about this oil pattern here. Well, it's a 35 feet cheetah oil pattern, and cheetah is synonymous with high scores, but this pattern's been revised, Dave. It's going to play a lot tighter down lane. The old cheetah pattern, all you had to do was try to throw it in the gutter, literally. There was so much friction to the outside part of the lane, the ball wouldn't even go in, but now... It goes in much easier. Players try to keep their angles much straighter on the new revised Cheeto oil pattern. Darren Tang will start things on the left lane. I can't beat that. That's got to calm the nerves down a little bit in his first televised finals appearance. Now Mike Wolf looking for his first win since 2008. Mike Wolf really likes the Cheeto oil pattern. A lot of success. Just like that. And very quickly, we bring up B.J. Moore the third from just outside of Pittsburgh, Greensburg, Pennsylvania. 28 years old. You really like his game. Yeah, folks, watch this. It, it, it just so much pure raw power and such little movement. It's like uh, watching Freddie Couples swing a golf club. <laughs> First one not to strike, so Anthony Simonson will come up on the right-hand lane. Remarkable what he has done in 19 years. This is his fifth televised final, and he is a major champion. And that's how you win a USBC Masters with shots like that. And both Simonson and Tang using urethane. Why do you think that is? Well, they want to go much straighter, and that urethane is going to create hang down lane for the players that are using reactive resin. They have to play farther left, throw to that spot. The urethane bowling balls, they drag oil down the lane. The reactive balls absorb oil. Tang, very familiar to college bowling fans. He was a terrific bowler, three-time All-American at San Jose State. Face that time, though, leaving 3-6-10. So you get an idea of the pace here. There's not, this is not your typical game. Now you'll have a more classic style game when the two players come out of here for the Cheetah Championship. Now Wolf able to mix him up and knock him down for a double. We saw Mike Wolf's new grip there as he put his hand on the ball. He's gone to the Sarge Easter grip. That's where it's fingertip on the middle finger and conventional on the ring finger. And he does it. Conversion for Tang on one of the tougher spares you'll see. Simonson not waiting for B.J. Moore at all. And he'll a single pin. 
Moore, who was the only player in the opening frame not to strike. He's one of the nicest guys you'll meet out here on tour, B.J. Moore. Great to see him bowling well. He took that a long way and it snapped back. Didn't quite take out the seven pin, so Simonson will have an opportunity for his single pin conversion. Hear a few, <laughs> <laughs> a few noises from the crowd like, woo! <laughs> yeah, I think Anthony was a little surprised at how much that spare shot hooked. That was a long way to go to pick up a single pin. Especially when we're so used to seeing players throw the ball straight at single pin spares. Like that. So everyone clean so far. And Tang, by the way, is still involved in college bowling. You take a look at his arsenal here. And how about the 3.5 on the pitch black? You're a thing. Another strike for Tang. That's what we used to use when I first came out on tour, Dave. When they used to set the pins by hand? <laughs> it was all your thing back then. <laughs> it, it, it's a modern urethane, but well urethane nonetheless. Yeah, you hear Mike wanted that to slow down, and he actually crossed over just a little bit to leave behind the 6'10". Oh. Very quickly, Moore coming back up. Best finish so far this year towards South Point in the PBA Extra South Point Vegas Open. He was 17th. Okay, he hammered that. Beautiful shot. He's a real aggressive player, and I think early on he was probably really jacked and overthrowing it. That was a great shot. No trouble there for the veteran Wolf out of New Albany, Indiana. What is it about Anthony Simonson that he's been able to do this, Randy, at 19, to be this good, this young? Well, mature beyond his years, obviously. Um, he, he's a little bit different than the other two-handed uh, styles that we have out here. He's, he's not that big high rev rate that we're used to seeing from like a Belmonte, a little more traditional role. And a traditional result for Anthony Simonson at 19 has taken the PBA by storm with a fantastic performance, including a major championship. We'll step aside. Four going at it at once. Two will stand for the Cheetah Championship. The PBA Cheetah Championship presented by PBA Bowling Challenge Bowl Game is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Reno Tahoe USA. For your next vacation getaway, go to visitrenotahoe.com. Mike Barbasol Shaving Cream, America's leader for a close, comfortable shave. Close Shave America, Close Save Barbasol. And by El Dorado, Silver Legacy, and Circus Circus, Reno's premier downtown properties. Time now for our Extra Frame Tournament highlights. How eight became four in this one, and one of the first to fall by the wayside. The great Walter Ray Williams Jr. is beaten by the youngster, Anthony Simonson, and Simonson rolling a 279 in the final game to wrap it up three games to one. Yeah, Walter Ray only managed one win in that matchup. Then it was Chris Barnes, the future Hall of Famer, taking on Mike Wolf. This matchup would go the distance, five games, but it was Wolf with a 227-205 victory in the end. Now, Sean Rash, he had a two games to one lead on Darren Tang, but look what happens here. Brutal luck for Rash. This would go five, and although Darren Tang didn't like this shot, until the end, he would win that final game 223 to 201. This would be his first telecast. And in our last matchup, world champion Dom Barrett taking on BJ Moore, but this was a sweeper. Dom could not manage one win. There's a pocket 4 9. It was all BJ Moore. BJ sweeps him 3-0 and finishes with a big 280 the last game. And there you see where we are. Darren Tang had to bowl more than anyone else to get to this group of four. 21 games on this cheetah pattern. And of course, there you get a chance to see what they've done to it so far. Yeah, you can see the oil really starting to break down here. 
right around the eighth board at lay down, crossing right over the first arrow, the fifth board on the right. Watch the early timing of Darren Tang. He's been working with Mike Jazz now here at the stadium on lane 81 and really working on his push away, getting the, swing, the ball in the swing just a little bit later. Beautiful, got a kick on the 10. And big double for Darren Tang. So Mike Wolf, the only player not to strike in that third frame. And a ringer. Great looking shot, just did not get a break on the 10 pin. So the, does that mean Wolf got stuck for a beer frame then? He did. Okay. But we've had two hey. already. I don't know how these all these guys are going to settle uh, this later. I mean, we had a beer frame in the first, yep. beer frame in the third. All right, moving on. Lord, well, he takes that right to the edge, and that's our first split of this group. And very quickly, you get the idea here that this is almost like bowling in your home house. When it's your turn, you get up and bowl. Yeah, it's a lot like qualifying where the players are, you know, one after another. And I think that really helps calm the nerves for the new guys, uh, Darren Yang and, and BJ. I mean, it, it's not the same environment in which just you and another player. And you're the only player up at that time. It's dead silent. But right now, B.J. Moore, first player to open in the fourth. Anthony Simonson left a single pin on this lane, on this left lane earlier. It struck twice on the right lane. Tip. He did. He begged for it to sit, or asked politely, I should say, and it did. So a double for Simonson. Tang and Simonson tied. Wolf three back. Oh, that eight pin was late, but it did take a beating. And down it goes for Mike Wolf. So Tang, we're going to double. Well, his timing looks good. That's going to cross over a little bit, however, and leave him with just, luckily for him, the three pin. A little sensitive cheetah pattern this year than we're accustomed to seeing. Got that one to the friction just a little bit early, and it goes through the nose. shot and it goes through the face 467 one of the youngster from Austin Texas and very quickly tang to go after the single pin there's the difference tang and Simonson's first shots very similar but tang is shooting at a single pin spare Simonson splits So he'll take his medicine for the count. The two highest scores will meet for the Cheetah Championship and $20,000 to the winner, $5,000 to two players who are eliminated, and $10,000 for the runner-up. More though, the messenger went right behind the 10 pin. Halfway through, B.J. Moore needs to start striking to get back in this. Well, Simon certainly left it open for Wolf there with that split. Yeah, it's Tang and Wolf now is your top two scores. And Tang powers the back. At least one. So B.J. Moore coming off of. Over. Comes back with the spare. So these are the four qualifiers 
for the Cheetah Championship, the final of this group. Having going through single elimination to defeat their opponents. Now all four bowling at once. The top two scores will come out and bowl for the Cheetah Championship and the $20,000 first prize. And you see right there that it's tanged by two on Wolf. This is Mike right here. Oh, God. Oh, geez. Very polite commentary from Mike Wolf about that shot. And just when things were looking good for him, he makes a mistake. So you kind of think, Randy, that Moore can string some strikes. He'll, he'll fight his way back in this. Yeah, he's got to start now. Flirting with that gutter, and the three pin is surrounded, or two pin rather, by friends, but they don't take it down. Has to go for it, and he got it! Fantastic! Great shot by Mike Wolf to keep himself in it. Randy, let's take a look at our hammer tough spare replay. Well, there's only one way to make the 210, and it's all about angle. You gotta catch the two pin on the left side, throw it into the 10. Wolf does it perfectly. Or no trouble there. That was the hammer tough spare replay that you just saw there. Mike Wolf blasting out that 210. And you get a very clear look at exactly how the standings are as we get ready to wrap up the sixth frame with Anthony Simonson. No break on that seven pin. That's when Mike Wolf gets through, he's going to remember that shot as the one that may have put him into the finals. didn't like about that. <laughs> Holding offense. <laughs> you got a 10-pin penalty? <laughs> because, see, the pins took the brunt of that one. <laughs> Time for our Columbia 300 Fun Fact. This year, we well, reminded you, over the course of the four Animal Pattern World Series of Bowling Televised Finals, eight of the 16 players are trying to win their first PBA Tour title. And in this foursome right here, the guy with the ball, Darren Tang, is one of them. But he only joined the tour this summer. Great. So I think he's going to win titles. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he'll get titles. I don't know about this one today, but I'm liking his chances down the road. You're predicting already that he's going to be a PBA champion. I am. Okay, I like that. Right now, he's leading the group of four here trying to, to get into the title match. Simonson coming off an open in the fifth, spare in the sixth. Then he'll leave the 2-4. Simonson, of course, with two titles Harder this year. Harder, it'll hook, I promise. A little pep talk for himself there. Al, it was a bit of sarcasm. He, he's uh, trying to get himself to slow down. He keeps throwing it harder. As you take a look at B.J. Moore's arsenal, it, it, quite a contrast. He's going with the most aggressive bowling ball in his arsenal. And can he get that? Yes, that's a huge break for B.J. Moore. It gives him still a fighting chance. And he's got somebody he can talk to, too, at the end of the day. His wife, Tania Falvo, is a fantastic bowler on the PWBA Tour. Simonson very quickly to go after his spare. Well, his spare shooting is exciting. I don't know if it's meant to be that exciting. Yeah, that, that, that was a little close. I mean, remember when he shot the two-pin back in the second frame, how much it hooked? That time the ball hardly got there. BJ looks fast and a little out of control right now, and he's got what we call over-under ball reaction. Gets it to the right a little bit early, it overhooks, gets it in just a pinch, it goes too long, speed's so sensitive and critical, but right now, it's all about Darren Tang. He's leading the group. Oh, boy, that looked fantastic, but the 10 pin didn't cooperate. So Tang has doubled a couple of times so far, but he's been the steadiest of the bunch. 
Mike Wolf, who may have saved himself with that fantastic 2-10 conversion, came right back with a strike in the seventh on a ball he didn't like. Yeah! He liked, yeah. He liked it. <laughs> Big shot there, Dan. <laughs> well, the veteran, looking for his fifth PBA Tour title, he has more than these three players do combined. Simonson has two, Tang and Moore, looking for their first one. Look out. They got it. Mike Wolf's got some good juju here uh, bowling on Cheetah. He's won on Cheetah before, but last year here he led the extra frame Cheetah event, uh, but he lost to Marshall Kent. And here's Anthony Simonson's arsenal, pitch black. Again, the low hook rating because it's straight urethane. Boy, it broke up what looked like it was going to be a little bit of a disaster. Right now, if you're B.J. Moore, you got to be thinking, I have to strike out from the eighth frame on to have any chance. There you go. He liked it. And has every reason to tend to sit in the pit. It's amazing how sensitive feel is. As soon as he let go of it, he said, there you go. And, and that's what this sport is all about. You're so in tune and in touch with feel. It's definitely a feel sport, that's for sure. Well, if you're feeling it, Darren Tang is your guy. 178 through 8, and Tang sitting in an excellent position with that strike in the foundation to advance. Top two make it through. And then we'll bowl in a more traditional manner for the lead oh no we're for a half a second there we had seven really? tenths yeah there. unlucky that was a really nice shot by mike wolf who's that ripper seven all right bj morris does a possible 214 simonson can strike out for 223 tang and wolf are in the two teens Got to have it. And he got a powerful shot by B.J. Moore. Punishing that errant seven pin. My bad. I think these guys have handled this unusual format rather smoothly as far as who's bold and the, the pace. Yeah, agreed. I mean, our, our guys are just so good at what they do oh, that they can adapt to any format. We're not quite done yet. We're You're not quite done. <laughs> You're <on>. right. <laughs> Come on. We're not done yet. Give me a chance. All right, Mike Wolf can strike out for 226. Darren Tank can strike out for 238. BJ Moore 214. Simonson 223. Yes, the messenger arrives. One more in good count, and Mike Wolf will solidify his spot into the finals. Same scenario for Darren Tang. Good count on this next shot. And he's moving on. But right here, right now, Mike Wolf with a strike. Yes, sir. Seven pin the last to fall. He's on his way. He needs eight on his fill shot. And Moore and Simonson just have to stand there. Yeah, they watch it. Max score again for B.J. Moore, 214, Tang and Mike Wolf already in the 220s. And Tang gets yet another strike, but B.J. Moore cannot make it. 
He has already been eliminated. Darren Tang's going to bolt for his first ever title. Maybe your premonition's going to come come true sooner rather than later. But Jesus. he needed eight. He got seven. Simonson can now strike out to tie. Unbelievable. He threw it straight. He went. He moved to the middle part of the lane and threw it straight down the center of the lane and got seven. I will, I will defer to you on that as to why you would do that. I know you need the number, but he's bowled it so well. I, I, I think that, that Mike second-guessed himself because of that because of that right there. You know, you, playing that close to the gutter, and Eric's shot is zero. You yeah. get it to the dry a little bit early, you can go through the nose, you can get six. I, well, Darren Ch Tang brought out a different ball for that last shot. He's in at 237. And now, B.J. Moore... And Anthony Simonson are left, but here's what Simonson can do. He can, and he said it, it's not over yet. He can do something about it. Two to go to tie to get in, and we'll have a one ball sudden death roll off. So much on the line in this 10th frame for Anthony Simonson, player of the year implications two more he gets into a roll off of wolf well it's not bj moore's day but it won't be the last time we see him oh I, yeah there's no question about it he's averaged this year almost 227 uh, on the tour and you know what? We're not finished with B.J. Moore and Animal Patterns. That's going through the face. And Mike Wolf survives. <laughs> he makes it along with Darren Tang. It'll be Tang looking for his first title. Wolf looking for his first title in eight years. Head to head for the Cheetah Championship. And there's the results from Cheetah Championship. First match, Darren Tang and Mike Wolf survive. Wolf had to watch Anthony Simonson had the opportunity to strike out to force a one ball roll off. Simonson could not do it. B.J. Moore finishing fourth. So Simonson and Moore cash for $5,000. Tang and Wolf, $20,000 on the line with the runner up receiving $10,000. Now time for our Ebonite flashback and the expert on flashbacks, Randy Peterson. Uh, I'm having one right now. And it involves Parker Bone the third. It was last year's Cheetah Championship. Parker took on Paul Moore of England. But it was all PB3 as Parker captures title number 35, and he moves into the fifth all-time in wins with this victory. Well, you saw Parker Bone win it. You see Anthony Pepe in 2014, Wes Malott, Bill O'Neill, Eugene McCune, and of course in 2009 it was Norm Duke. So, Randy, let me put you on the spot. You got Mike Wolf looking for his first win since 2008. Darren Tang, a rookie on the tour, looking for his first title on the PBA. Who's going to be the graphic guy next year, 2016? Who's going to get there? I, you know, that, that's a great question. And, and when we went to break, I was thinking about who had the advantage. I still think Mike Wolf has that. It's just because of experience. Wolf made an interesting decision there at the end to go cautiously down the lanes. When he needed eight, he had seven and had to sweat through the final shots from Simonson. But he made it, and that's all that matters. We'll be back with the battle for $20,000 in the first of the animal patterns, the cheetah. It'll either be Darren Tang or Mike Wolf when we come back. The excitement. The National Bowling Stadium in downtown Reno. We're ready to our first of four animal patterns this holiday season. Darren Tang and Mike Wolf for the Cheetah Championship and $20,000. And for Mike Wolf, it would be extra sweet at age 40 to pick up his fifth PBA Tour title, his first since the 2008 Ultimate Scoring Championship. Meantime, Darren Tang joined the PBA in July of this year, looking for his first title in his first finals appearance. And that's not a good shot at all, as you can see. That was really one of the first ones that got away from him. The last time he shot the 3-6-10, he made it on the left side. And 3-6-10, and then you throw the 9 behind it. It's one of the least liked spare attempts out here. 
thought it was interesting when we spoke to Darren the other the other afternoon. He, we asked him about the uh, the patterns and you know what was it that you liked about this pattern. Oh, there you go. Did it again. He says, you know, I, I try not to dislike any of the patterns. <laughs> he wants to be an equal opportunity lover of patterns. <laughs> That's a good point, though, because if, if you get patterns that get in your head that you don't like before you even show yeah. up, you probably are beaten. But I, I think it's more than that, Dave. I, I think he's just a genuine animal lover. As are you. Like Wolf took that thing. If there's such a thing as a half board, he used it. And let's go down now to the lanes. Kimberly Pressler is standing by with two guys who didn't make it to the championship match. Kimberly? Yeah, thanks, Dave. I know that's not the way that these guys wanted their day to end, but Anthony, let's start with you. You needed three strikes. You got one. When you threw that last ball, did you think it was going to be a strike? Uh, no, not really. It's a little bad with my hand. I've been having a little bit of problem towards the end of the World Series. Uh, you know, he gave me a chance, and I didn't take advantage of it. Well, you played well, and uh, this is the end of your World Series, but you know what? You did a great job, so thanks for being here. Thank you. Now, BJ, let's talk real quick about you out there. When we talked, you said you just couldn't find your rhythm. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was, I was definitely amped up, a lot of adrenaline going, so uh, approaches were a little slick today. Everybody kind of found that, so just a combination of both hard to get your feet under you, and I was just kind of, I bowled timid instead of, you know, how, how I've been with aggressive, so. Well, this isn't the end for you because we're going to see you also in the Scorpion Championship, so good luck on that match. Thank you. That's right, BJ Moore, good enough to make two. Darren Tang I just watched a double from his competitor, Mike Wolf. Didn't like that one. And nor should he. It went Brooklyn that time, and you see him fussing with his feet a little bit. Maybe a little approach issue, but that was the full yank, almost missing the head pin running away, Brooklyn. Big, long third, but look how early that ball starts to come down from the top. That, to me, looked like it was a timing issue that caused an approach issue. Well, this is an example of somebody who hasn't been in this situation before as far as his television finals appearances on the PBA Tour. The timing of these shows, the weights in between games, and maybe you lose a little bit of what you have. Watch the top of his backswing and when the ball starts to fall. If it gets to the top of the swing too early and starts to return, the ball's going to get there too much in time with his slide step. You always want to get in front of the bowling ball. Slide foot first, ball second. When he gets early, it's no good. had so many things that, that could have been, but instead it's going to be a strike and a badly needed one because Wolf's first two shots were absolutely dead solid perfect. Should I move on that lane? Cheat a little bit. I think the bad part about the approach to being this slippery is that I have to slow my feet down. What's the good thing? I don't know. I don't want to hear the bad thing. Darren Tang conversing with his tour rep, Jim Callahan. And that's all we've seen from Wolf in this game so far is just Blasting pins. Well, I was going to say that you made mention of Mike Wolf's last title coming in 2008. And with all the work that he's doing back home with his pro shops, he's a very successful business uh, business owner and operator, and not bowling quite as much as he used to. But Mike Wolf can still bowl. Well, he defeated Chris Barnes in that round of eight to get here. And you see, when he does get on television. It's a pretty good batting average. He is locked in right now. Well, he's managing his game nicely, and he's catching some nice half pocket hits. Not every shot is dead flush, but it doesn't have to be, especially when you have this much angle from the outside part of the lane. You see Darren Tang's road to the finals. He qualified by four pins for that 22nd spot. He barely made it and then took out Mitch Beasley, Pajak, and then Sean Rash in a five game. Got a break on the 10. 
All right, so let's go back a couple of frames ago when Darren almost missed the head pin left. Watch how early this ball returns from the top of the swing. That's the thing that he's been working on. You can see it right there. He, he knew that that was early timing. He's, it's something that he fights. He worked with Mike Jazz now on it. It all starts with his push away. If that ball gets to the top of the swing too quick and returns, he's dead. So that is our track tech talk. He's Randy Peterson. I'm Dave Lamont, along with Kimberly Pressler, who is lane side. Feel lucky. It didn't. Well, right now, he's struggling to get his ball to consistently make the same move down lane. This looks like a pretty good shot, and I think he probably caught too much of it at the bottom, making the ball read too early, and he pays for it. One behind, and now trails by 36. Randy may mention earlier the last time that Mike Wolf was in a televised finals. It was a Cheetah Championship in 2012 in Vegas. He was the number one seed, was defeated by Bill O'Neill. You see Mike's road to the finals there. Well, he's trusting his shot right now. Yeah, right now. Mike Wolf is taking his opponent to the shed. His bar reaction is beautiful. When he misses right, it goes high flush. When he gets it in a little bit, it goes half pocket. Right now, Mike Wolf's ball is reading the breakdown of this pattern perfectly. Let me ask you, you think you have what it takes to beat today's champions? Head to PBA.com and check out the PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game for your iPhone iPad and Android devices with over 16 million downloads. Join your friends in today's Cheetah Championship Tournament. Hold a better score than today's winner and be entered to win. Well, good luck with that right now with the way Mike Wolf looks. PBA Bowling Challenge offers over 100 different bowling ball options, career mode, and 35 different venues to bowl at. Click on the mobile game link at PBA.com to get started. Blowing him up. Ten straight back. Solid through six for Mike Wolf. And that's what TV experience will give you. And Mike Wolf survived game one, saw what the pattern was giving him. And right now, it's all about just executing because he knows what the ball is going to do when it leaves his hand. Which is unfortunately for Darren Tang the exact opposite of what he's going through right now. So many balls are just diving through the face on him right now. So th there's the difference because of the angle and the equipment that's being used. Urethane versus reactive resin. When Darren Tang gets it to the right, it overhooks and goes through the nose because he's going too straight. And he has to with that piece of equipment. Now, if he goes too reactive, he can move in and play the same line Mike Wolf is playing, which quite honestly wouldn't be a bad idea, except for the fact that it's in the sixth frame and his opponent has the front six. searching, going through every little bit of advice he can in his head to try to figure out something here, but the best he can do is a 223. And that would take a gigantic finish. Mike Wolf already in the 240s. He's sticking with the urethane. Now he brought out one different ball when he had already wrapped up his spot when we had the four players going at once. That was in the 10th frame. And there you see a good example of what's happened to him, is how that ball just snapped in. Remember when he changed balls? Yeah. The, the last game? Yeah, uh, the, 10th frame. Yeah. The last game on his fill shot. And it, did, it didn't react the, the way he wanted it to. I think he kind of opened the lane up. He went to reactive, and then the ball went light. 
And so that affected his decision for this title match. But right now it's back to back to back. Big splits. Looking at the three, four, six, seven, ten. Gonna take a run at uh, I just gutter the darn thing. Not to be for Darren Tang today, but uh, a great tournament nonetheless. Mike Wolf, right now, you, you got to be—he's got to be thinking to himself. All right, well, let's see. Uh, how about I just strike out and win another ten grand on top of the twenty that he's looking at now? And there went that. Oh, Boy, there's oh. nothing wrong with that shot either. A great shot. Mike Wolf is going to win his fifth title on a pattern he likes. You know, when talking with him, he says, yeah, you know, I've been changing my grip, adjusting some things, and it took a while to get it right, but I guess it's right because I made the show. And he won it. So it is time for our Barbasol cloche. We were this close to a front seven. Thinks he has it. Ten pin just wasn't going to cooperate. Six wraps right around. Oh, God. What? 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 Well, it's only the eighth frame, but Mike Wolf is a winner. And I know how it feels after not winning for a long time. And, uh, boy, I couldn't be happier for Mike Wolf. And I can't feel more for Darren Tang and what he's going through. I remember my first time on television, 150. Really? Oh, you had a pretty sweet record on TV. I, I shot 154 against uh, David Ozio, Tucson. And then uh, he went up to both against Mike Durbin for the title, and Durbin shot 150. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't feel so bad now. The great Mike Durbin just pulled 150-something. Okay. Of course, I blamed it on the lanes. Well, it had to be the lanes, right? I mean, they didn't have nice oil colors down there in your day, so you couldn't follow. And oh, yeah, come on, there's a lot of excuses. It was windy. Uh, it was windy and cold inside. Yeah, come on. Oh well, yeah, how uh, about it? Did he get a message here? Nope, he didn't. Hey, Darren, here's a little consolation prize for you. How about a nice swift kick in the stomach? What poor kid. All right, now remember, only three times. The history of bowling on television has the 7-10 split been made, and it's going to stay that way. Because you can't bounce pins out of out yeah. of the pit here at the bowling stadium. So Darren Tang was so solid when all four players were trying to get down to two with a game in the 230s, but this time he didn't have it, and Mike Wolf did. So Mike Wolf picks up his fifth title on the PBA Tour. And shots like that is how he did it. Congratulations to Mike for the convincing performance to win the PBA Cheetah Championship here at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno. The PBA Cheetah Championship presented by PBA Bowling Challenge Bowl Game is brought to you by HotelPlanner.com, the best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed by Reno Tahoe USA. For your next vacation getaway, go to visitrenotahoe.com. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. And by Skechers, wide fit with air-cooled memory foam. It's first class for your feet. Oh, uh, Dave, beautiful Lake Tahoe. I remember the first time I went boating. It was a hot summer day. I go, you know what? It's such a beautiful lake. I'm going in. Man, was it cold. Yeah, uh, I wasn't going to recommend that, but better you than me. Take us through our Geico Championship recap, please. You, you got it. It was all Mike Wolf, starting with the front six. Man, he was slinging some serious wood. Darren Tang, four big splits in the title match. Mike Wolf, nine spare with a big ringing 10 in the seventh. He strikes out. He wins the title, 279 to 143. Now let's throw it down to Kimberly and our champion.
Thanks, Randy. So, Mike, congratulations on your win. You had a great final match, but you almost didn't make it. In that first match, in the 10th frame, you needed eight, you got seven. But it looked like you threw it straight when you were curving it. Why did you decide to change it? Uh, well, with the new cheat and the way it's been revamped, uh, there wasn't one point in time in any match that I didn't think I could throw it in the gutter. Um, so it's either getting seven or eight. Uh, I figured if I hit the head pin and just threw it straight, I would come out with at least seven or whatever and put the pressure back on Anthony. Um, obviously, we didn't want that to happen, but I you know, got lucky to get seven, I guess, because I kind of slipped a little bit and missed the whole building almost. But um, getting any pins at all, throwing it down the middle would have been better than throwing the gutter. It sure would have been. But so, you know what? You find yourself in the winner's circle. The last time you were here was eight years ago. Put into words what this win means to you. Uh, it's, it's obviously the fifth one is very special. Had a lot of support from uh, the Ebonite guys this week. Uh, the guy right over there in the corner, Rob Gottschall, was instr instrumental this week. Uh, he just kind of kept us, we bounced ideas off of him all week, and everything seemed to work out. He was uh, very in instrumental in the beginning this year. Well, you've earned it. Congratulations on your fifth PBA Tour title. He was magnificent picking up that victory. And I wonder which of his several pro shops that trophy will be displayed in. Maybe he'll keep that one at home. Our next PBA Tour telecast, the Chameleon Championship, Saturday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. For Kimberly Pressler and Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont. We thank our crew and we thank you for watching the Cheetah Championship and the Cheetah Champion Mike Wolf with a 279 in the title game to win $20,000.